Hello, I'm Dr. Jim McCarty and this is Sherry Johnson and Sherry is started as a patient here uh, what, about two weeks ago, week and a half? A week and a half ago. Good. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you could, Sherry, tell us, I know you. it was kind of interesting how you found us, mm -hmm. okay, because you were trying to deal with a TMJ problem. Right. So can you kind of tell us when the TMJ issue, when you noticed it starting? Yes. Um, it was last October. Uh -huh. I remember sitting at my computer and I had felt that morning when I woke up that my jaw was sore uh -huh. and um, my bite was off. I could tell that my bite was off. I was only biting down on the left side. And in that same day, I started getting a funny feeling at the top of my head right here. Okay. And it was almost like a, an itchy feeling there. And um, also I noticed that I had some pain in the back of my neck. Okay. Um, and so I went to my dentist right. and um, he put a splint, had me put a splint in and... Was that upper or lower? Well, they had me put the upper one in uh -huh. that I had used in the past. Right. Which caused me major problems after I put that back in. And so then they went and had me put a lower one in. They okay. built me a lower splint and it wasn't helping. Okay. It wasn't helping at all. And I'd go back every couple of weeks for adjustments, but in this time that, that was happening, my neck had gotten really bad. I mean, really was hurting pretty bad. And through the months, I started getting pain all the way shooting up to the top of my head where I was getting that funny feeling in my head. And um, that's how I called you because I was at the wit's end. <laughs> and so uh, you said that you'd gone to so you would had one splint. When was the first splint given to you? The first splint was given to me a year prior. Um, I had had some TMJ problems and that splint helped me. Mm -hmm. But this time in October when I felt like it was maybe TMJ, it felt different. It wasn't what I was feeling the first time. And they, but they had to go ahead and put that on. So they in. had you try the old splint mm -hmm. and then when that made things worse. It made them way worse. And then they had you come in and put in the fit you for the lower splint? Yes. And then he'd have me come back every couple of weeks and he would adjust that lower splint. And how long did that go on for? Seven, six, six and a half months. Okay, so it started in October? Mm hmm Okay. Up through April, May? Uh, up through May. Mm hmm Okay. And then uh, they sent you to another dentist, right? Yes, actually it was my choice. I went, I decided to go see a TMJ specialist because uh -huh. it wasn't helping me. Okay. And the TMJ specialist told me I did not have TMJ, that I had what was called Ernest Syndrome, which I had never heard of before. And they were going to just, the treatment for that was putting steroid shots in my ligament. Right. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. ligament. Um, for me to come in once a week and they were going to put steroid shots in my ligament and then that was going to treat that problem. Okay. But I didn't feel comfortable with that and I didn't feel like that was my problem because I knew my bite was off and I knew my neck was hurting and I was having these pains up into my head. At that time I did not have the chronic headache. Right. Um, but it, it didn't take long. It was a, a couple weeks after that that the chronic headache and neck ache hit and I couldn't get rid of it. Okay and so then once, once you couldn't get rid of it uh, did you try any pain medications? I did. I tried pain medication. I tried muscle relaxers. I mixed extra strength Tylenol with ibuprofen, which I don't do. I don't take medicines, but right. I was at the point where I, I couldn't even sleep. I, I didn't know what to do anymore. And I had gone to the emergency room five times within that span. And What did they tell you? They told me, um, a couple of times they just told me that it was probably allergies uh -huh. or, or sinus. Uh -huh. you know, problems and uh, they would prescribe me antibiotics yep. and I took the antibiotics and nothing was changing, nothing was helping me and then... They uh, finally told you you had what I The last time I went to the uh, ER, the doctor there said they did a CAT scan on my head and yep. he said, I don't see any tumors, you have what is called occipital neuralgia and um, told me that I, had to, I needed to see a neurologist. Okay. That was the only thing. He, he yeah, actually gave me pain medication while I was there at the hospital and it didn't even touch my problem. I, was still, I still had a headache when I left there. Okay. And so, Did um, it make you nauseous? Yes. 
Yes, it did. It, and, it, and it made me, my, my muscles jerk like crazy. I would never felt that before. And I didn't like it because I felt like I was completely not in control of my body. And so, um, so then I called a neurologist the right. next day and they said, well, we can get you in. And I had told them I'd been to the ER and everything. And they said, well, and I was in chronic pain at that point. And they said, we can get you in, but not till June 11th. Well, this was the beginning of May, right? And I was there was no way I could deal with. So that was six weeks out. Yes, yes. And so I dealt with the pain a little bit longer, and then that's when I decided to call um, the TMJ specialist again, and I called you. Right. And, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and and because I was absolutely at the verge of a nervous breakdown. At that point, actually the night before, I was crying so intensely with my husband and telling him I couldn't, I couldn't deal with the pain. Was that, that was that where you were telling me you were at the restaurant? Yeah, no, that, that, that actually happened a week before where okay. I was at the restaurant and, um, and I was in pain then and I, was, I couldn't even eat. My husband was trying to get me to eat and I couldn't eat. And I, was telling him that I just I didn't know what I was going to do, that this pain was horrible, and that I just needed help, and then that's when I found the charm that I felt. And, um, you know, I just, I was at the point when I called you of even losing my job because I couldn't work. I right. couldn't focus on my computer anymore. And so. So the, your work requires being on the computer a lot, a lot of mental, a lot of mental multitasking yes. and yeah. research you know research. I'm researching and I'm reading and I'm, I'm reading constantly and I couldn't focus on even a document at that point because the pain was so bad and this was you told me it was a your your mom actually told me it was affecting the whole, the family. whole family it had affected it has affected the whole family my husband has been a trooper because I wouldn't have put up with me <laughs> It, I was crying all the time. I didn't, I didn't deal with the responsibilities that I need, that I've always dealt with, and never had a problem dealing with. I couldn't deal with them. I was letting things lapse. Um, my family, when they would ask me to come over for like a birthday party or something, all I could talk about was my problems that yeah. I was having and the pain I was in, and I couldn't laugh or smile or anything. And, and you, you told me you had always been the go-to person always. in the family. I've always been that go-to person where, Sherry, we need this, or can you draw this up for us? Because, you know, I, that's the kind, of, the kind of work I do, and I, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. And uh, then you, you called the other doctor who happens to share my same name. Yes. And um, then you got me by mistake and we chatted for a while and then I told you that that I have uh, over 400 hours in neurology postgraduate and you wanted to know how soon you could get in and I said now yeah, we get two openings this afternoon one at one and one at five and you said well gosh five would work great mm -hmm. so you brought your mom uh, and I know when you were talking to me you were your voice you actually started crying on the phone because you literally had lost all hope. I had, absolutely had, because I had been watching other videos um, on the internet about occipital neuralgia and people saying that they are having to live with this pain, that they've it, had it for years and years, and they lost their jobs, and they lost their family, and I, I didn't want that to happen to me. Right. I could not handle that happening to me, and I did not want to have to live with the pain. Yeah. Because that is so painful, and I just um, so when I talked to you and you gave me that glimpse of hope and told me basically what was wrong with me even before you saw me, right. which was so incredible to me, um, it just gave me that that hope of somebody understands and and he can help me. And so you came in that first day with your mom. Yes. And. Uh, I know we took a while because I explained things to you because you hadn't t had months, weeks and months to go study it out and just absorb it. So I actually took the time to explain things and then so step by step we just did what needed to be done. We did the exam to find out what was compressed and twisted and then started working on the muscles from head down to the tailbone there so that we could free up that 
that's where the spinal fluid flows from your head to your lower back and then the the meninges, the dura, is part of the meninges and it goes from your head to your tailbone. So we were working with this tightness, like a tight towel effect that went from the head to the tailbone. And so when you first came in that first, well, when you were talking to me on the phone that morning on a scale of zero to 10, where would you say your pain was? Oh, most, most definitely between a nine and a 10 at that point in time. I was in so much pain. I, when I got off the phone with you, I laid in my bed and cried. Okay. And when you got here with your mom and we worked on you and when you left, what, what, uh, what did headache, you feel? And this is incredible to me because my mother didn't even believe me. My headache was gone. I, I did not have a headache. I still felt a little bit of um, that weird pressure that I had felt in my head and, and I still felt a little pain in my in my jaw but I was able to take my splint out when I got here that day mm -hmm. you had me take my splint out I have not put my splint back in it's not been back in my mouth so that's been about 10 days now about yes. a week and a half and uh, what again so you left and the headache was gone yes I did not have a headache now it did come back a little while later in the evening but it wasn't it wasn't that unbearable pain that I had had was not at all. In fact, I have not had that since my first day that I came here. Um, I've had, you know, slight headaches right in the beginning of the first week, but over the weekend I did not have headaches. I did not have my neck pain that I was having. Um, and again, my mouth, I, I haven't had to put my splint in. That's, that's great. I'm yeah. happy for you. <laughs> and you, you mentioned something earlier to me. Your husband said that he saw you smile today? Yes. And what did he say? He said that he hadn't seen me smile like this in so long. That, and, and it was to the point where I knew I hadn't smiled like this in a long time either. But he, I think he felt like the, the sh old Sherry is back. <laughs> you know, this is my wife. Yes. This, because I'm not a complainer. I'm not a mean person. Right. But, I mean, when you're in chronic pain, you literally have no tolerance for anything. I had no tolerance for anything. And I'm not usually that person. I'm usually a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, we did what, uh, was it four treatments last week mm -hmm. and three this week? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we worked to unlock the bridge of the nose first. Right. And then now we're working on the roof of the mouth, the palatine suture, where it comes together where these front two teeth are. And I think I mentioned to you even on the phone that when we get two skull plates unlocked, that's where about half the people start to feel significant relief. Well, you began to feel it the very first day. Right. But um, I think you told me that this weird pain up mm -hmm. on the head, that that's what pretty much been gone now for... Right. I haven't had the pain on the top of my head, which was my huge, biggest fear because I that's just not something that you... Right. You hear about. Um, I, you know, I have the tingling feeling, but not the pain that I had. And I just know. And I, the tingling feeling that I have is very seldom. It's only whenever I feel like a little bit stressed or something. Right. Um, but it's before, before my headaches hit, I was feeling that tingling feeling constantly. Okay. And then all of a sudden, finally, the headaches started coming. Um, but now I just barely feel anything. So, so like today and yesterday, what number? From zero to ten. Of pain? Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't. I haven't had any pain. Yeah. I don't have any pain. I'm sore because yes. <laughs> you're working on me pretty good, but no pain. No pain in my head at all. Anything that you would like to tell anybody with <laughs> occipital neuralgia? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I've read. I've, I've watched the videos. I've read people their blogs. Tons of them. My daughter watched it with me, holding my hand. And crying with me because I literally thought I was going to have to live with it. And you don't have to live with it. You don't because there is treatment. He's amazing. And it, you know, it's, it is just absolutely incredible to think that there is a way to get rid of the pain and for it to stay away. And because I feel sorry for the people that, that don't go through the treatment. I do because I couldn't live with that pain. Well, that's what I was saying that people can't imagine another five years or 10 years or 15 or 20 years with that kind of pain 
and it actually pushes them to the point of nervous breakdown absolutely. or suicide. Absolutely, absolutely, and, I'm, and, and I hate saying this because I'm, you know, I don't have those tendencies or anything, but I did say to my husband, I can see why people don't want to be here right. anymore because it is a pain that just doesn't go away. Yeah. It just didn't go away, and nothing was helping it. I, I slept on heating pads and kept them on my head. I wrapped them on my head. I did everything to try to get the pain to go away. And it would go away. Well, I'm glad you're feeling oh. better. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to you. <laughs> thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Jim McCarty, and I'm a chiropractor. And I'd like to take the few minutes here today to show you some exercises that you can do on yourself or on your family members to help neck pain. First thing that we're going to do is I'm going to let the patient sit on the table or in a chair, relax her head forward into my hand, and I'm going to grab the back of her neck, kind of like a mother cat, and just grab a bunch of muscle. So I'm grabbing the muscle there. The people that have larger hands will be able to grab more. People with smaller hands won't grab as much, but just grab it and let your head relax. And what I'm doing is nodding her head in a yes fashion. And again, this is passive exercise. I'm compressing the neck muscles to reset the muscles, to reset the proper tone in the neck. So this is very helpful with people who have had neck injuries or whiplash, car wreck. So the patient's just relaxing her head and I'm grabbing the neck muscles and using my other hand on her forehead to be able to do the movement. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the other side. I'm going to put my knee on the, on the table, I'm grabbing her neck, let me, and the reason I'm doing it on both sides is to get kind of some even movement. We're grabbing the neck as best we can. And sometimes it may slip a little bit and you may want to grab a new handful of muscle. Okay. So that's the first exercise. Now I'm going to step around behind the patient and I'm going to place my hand on her shoulders on the upper trapezius here and I'm going to grab a handful of muscle on both sides and go ahead and nod your head yes up and down and I'm just holding the muscles of these upper trapezius and again we're resetting the muscles the tone of the muscles in the upper traps now the patient is now Brenda is now nodding her head yes and so she's actually playing an active part in this. It'd be better if I had four hands so that I could do all the work. But again, we don't. So we're using what we have. And so patient is actually making this an active exercise instead of passive. But we've now worked to reset some muscle tone in the neck muscles and in the upper trapezius muscles. Now we're going to work on these muscles right between the shoulder blades and the reason that we're doing all this is when people are in car wrecks and they their head gets snapped backwards and forwards many people call that a whiplash or a hyperflexion hyperextension injury then these ligaments in the neck get stretched and the muscles get stretched when the ligaments get stretched then it's like a bowstrain that is getting lengthened. So when the ligaments get injured, the muscles have to work overtime. And what we're trying to do is to reset the muscles so that they have the proper muscle tone. So we're working on the neck muscles, the upper trapezius. Now we're gonna work on these muscles right between the shoulder blades. So I'm gonna get on my knees behind her, make my hands kind of like well, the two knife edges, just inside the shoulder blades and Brenda if you would lean back into me so she's leaning back I'm going to compress this muscle towards the midline of the spine 
and go ahead and nod your head again, like yes. So Brenda's nodding her head yes, so she's actually putting the head and neck and the muscles in the back all through a range of motion while I'm holding some compression on these muscles towards the midline of the spine. And so as we're doing this, we're resetting some of these muscles in between the shoulder blades. So there's three different exercises that you can do or you can do for your loved ones at home. Now, how you would do this on yourself, Brenda, if you could just grab your own, yeah, grab your neck first of all with one hand, and then you could do this while you're at the stoplight. You could do this while you're sitting in a chair watching television or on the toilet. Go ahead and grab your own neck and then just nod your head. There you go. So she's grabbing her own neck and she's nodding her head. Now again, this is active exercise, not quite as good as the passive, somebody else doing it for you, but it'll still work and you can do it at the stoplight if you want. And go ahead and the next one where you're grabbing both these upper shoulders and she's just grabbing a handful of muscles, nodding her head yes. And again, good stress release anytime during the day if you're at your computer, if you're in traffic, whatever. Kind of hard to reach behind here and do the other one yourself. But uh, great, relax for just a moment. And Pastor David, if you could just come over here, if you don't mind, and if you could just do the first one where you're grabbing a handful of neck muscle, there you go. And just relax and let him put your head through that range of motion. So as you can see, just by watching this for a few moments, then you can do this for yourself or for the loved ones in your family and you can give them back some range of motion in their neck. And let's get the other side. And even though I'm a chiropractor and I believe that there's nothing that will replace a good chiropractic adjustment when it's needed, I believe that there's going to come a time when we're going to need to be able to help our families by doing these basic types of things that are going to help. And let's get you a step around her. And if you don't mind, just grabbing her shoulders. And then Brenda, go ahead and just nod your head. All these things do not take a degree. They don't take a degree in chiropractic. They don't take a degree in, or certification in massage. They just take a willing heart and somebody that wants to help their family members or friends to feel better. And this next one here, again, if you just take your hands like a knife edge in between the shoulder blades, Brenda, if you'll lean back and then go ahead and just nod your head. And leaning back is important because it's given him some pressure, something to push against as David's pushing together and pushing kind of forward. And so they're balancing each other out and he's compressing those muscles to reset the muscle tone while Brenda's actually nodding her head and putting her neck through a range of motion. So, great. Thank you very much. And uh, what, Brenda, what have you felt in the last few days when we've been doing some of this work on your neck? Have you noticed any change at all with I, your neck? Yes, this idea was totally, I couldn't do like that. I would have to push it, so, get it over, and it hurt bad because I ride a lot. So you ride a lot. and then turning your head to one side or the other, it hurt. Good, okay, great. Thank you all very much for joining us today. And this is Dr. Jim McCarty. Uh, feel free to go to our website at 
uh, drmccarty.com. That's www.drmccarty.com. Thank you.